is Jonathan, and today we are going to play with masks in OpenShot um, and learn all about why um, and how to use a mask. And so essentially, um, a mask is just a fancy way of, of showing part of a video or image and hiding certain parts. Um, and to facilitate that using OpenShot, we need a black and white image. And this black and white image is basically going to tell OpenShot what parts do I show, what parts do I hide. So it's completely controllable. Whatever is white um, is something that will disappear, and whatever is black is something that will be opaque. And that's kind of the general um, rule of thumb. So I'm here in GIMP um, to, to take this picture of my backfield and kind of do some, some masking, maybe replace out the sky or something fun. Um, so I'm just going to quickly cover this. I think how to use an image program, an image editing program, might be beyond the scope of this. Um, but you can see it's not super hard. What I'm going to do, I basically have one layer um, down here, and so what I'm going to do is create a new transparent layer on top, and I'm going to do a foreground layer on the bottom, so we have black behind our picture, and we have an invisible layer on top. I'm going to choose a white color, and essentially, I'm just going to erase the sky by by coloring it in white. Um, and to do this, th there's a million ways to do this. I'm just trying to keep it simple here. Um, so what we would do is we would fill in the sky with white. Again, we could use, I'm going to be kind of careful around the trees. And I'm, I'm not going to, to show you the entire process because it's going to take a while. Um, but creating a good mask takes takes a while, um, depending on what you want it to to mask out. So I'm just kind of giving you a um, a quick demonstration. Um, so what this is this is the general process of what you would do. Um, so you can see when I erase the middle layer, it's going to leave the back as a black layer, which we added at the uh, behind, and it's going to put the top layer as white layer. Um, so at, we would we would push in here and we would get closer and closer, closer and closer to the trees we wanted to mask out. And then I would keep using smaller and smaller brushes and I would push my way in. Now the sky is blue, so technically we could just kind of delete all blue in this picture and it would make this go quicker. Um, and then I would get even a smaller brush and I would push in even more and I would get in and try to follow the contour of the trees a little bit to make it feel pretty organic. Um, and things like this, I might even go in in the middle of the trees and kind of just, just fill in a little bit, make it look somewhat real. OK, so then when we're done with this, this basic process, let me just finish this because I'm, I think this will look nice. OK. So then what we will get at the end of this is we can keep hiding our middle layer and looking at our, our mask, and we can kind of clean up areas that are a little transparent um, until we feel like we have a, a fairly good mask. Um, and then what we're going to do is save this mask image. Now, of course, this is, uh, like I said, just partially complete. I, I will finish this up, and then I will take the final picture, and I will just save it as a JPEG, just a simple uh, save as, uh, export as JPEG. And then we will pick this back up in just a second in OpenShot. So I will be right back. All right, so here is my finished mask. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Could be a lot better. Um, you'll see that there's also some some areas of gray, and those gray areas will be kind of partially partially transparent, partially opaque, uh, which will help feather you know the um, kind of transition between the mask, make it look more realistic. Um, and so you'll see some of the the mask, some of the trees actually have holes that we can, we'll see through the trees, which will make it feel a bit more realistic. Um, so now the next step is basically take this, this image and drop it into a folder um, that's in your home folder called, it's a, it's a folder named dot open shot underscore QT and then a, a subfolder called transitions. So on Windows and Mac, this, this is located in a slightly different place. But it's all located in your user's home folder, and there might be it might be hidden by default, so you might have to dig a little. Um, but in your home folder, you should have a 
a .openshot Qt folder um, with a, a subfolder called transitions, and you can drop any black and white um, PNG or JPEG images in this. And when you launch OpenShot, they will actually be available in the list of transitions in OpenShot. So it always looks at this little folder and, and loads them in like they were like they were built into OpenShot itself. Um, so you can reuse these over and over and over if you have some really interesting um, custom transitions or custom masks. Um, in this case, it's a mask. could be a transition as well. Um, so I'll, I'll explain the difference here shortly. So now let's launch OpenShot and take a look at our new uh, mask. So now that we have added the transition, um, we should find our new transition or mask image in the Transitions tab of OpenShot. So if we click on Transitions, um, there's quite a few here, so I will search on this little uh, filter box here. So I will search tree, and there we go. We have our tree uh, mask file that we're fixing to use. So now, before we get started, we need to add a few more um, things. We're going to add our background picture, and we're going to add, let's see, I'll start with that. And I'm going to grab another video, which I like to use. Um, there we go. So this is kind of cool. So if we drop our background image on the top track here, so it's just no big deal. It's just our normal picture. And if I switch over to transitions and drop this directly on top, then and I kind of scrub through this, you'll see it. It appears, the, um, the entire thing appears, and then the sky appears. So this is the way a typical transition works, right? It kind of fades from, from black, kind of nothing to, to completely opaque. Um, so what we're going to do is change this, this brightness curve. And that, that's, the brightness curve is basically um, what makes a transition animated. You know, it, it kind of goes through that keyframe. So what we're going to do is right click and remove the final keyframe. Um, so right now, what that did is left it completely opaque. So that is not what we want. What we want is to edit this to be zero. And so basically, this is right in the middle of a keyframe um, of a normal, uh, right in the middle of a normal transition keyframe. So it goes from negative one to positive one normally when it animates. So we're kind of just sticking it right in the middle at zero. So it just stays at, at the zero value. And you'll notice, you'll notice we have no sky because our mask is making it invisible. So now, if I switch back to files and I drop this um, animation behind, you will see, which I think looks really cool, you will see that um, our sky, even, even through some of the, um, the tree limbs there, our sky is now this crazy um, video thing that I dropped. Um, and it's very neat looking. So again, that's a pretty quick way to, um, to kind of go into GIMP or whatever photo editor you want make a mask that would fit on top of a video to erase some part of the background or some part of the foreground, and then just drop it in the, the OpenShot transition folder and launch OpenShot. And it's, it's essentially like you've now modified OpenShot, and it has kind of a custom, your own set of custom uh, masks or transitions, depending on how you animate the, um, the actual brightness curve on your, on your transition. It can be a, just a flat mask, or it can, um, it can be a, you know, um, an animated transition. Um, so that's, that's the first part of the video. The second part, um, which we kind of covered, I'm going to delete, delete our custom transition. Um, so now our picture is opaque, the sky is opaque, and you don't see the video behind it. Um, so I'm going to just overlap the two clips, and you'll see that blue box appears. That's basically an auto transition. So that will just kind of crossfade between between the two. So you can see much different than, than a mask. It just kind of one fades over top of the other one. Um, but if I delete that, we can go and clear our filter up here. You can drop any transition. Um, so let's do something. I don't really, it doesn't matter which one. Let's grab this one's kind of fun. So the only thing you have to do with transitions is basically position them correctly and size them correctly. So they basically um, exist only as the as the two clips overlap. Um, so that should give enough. So I will actually zoom into this a little bit. Give ourselves some more precision. There we go. 
So now you can see that following this transition, which is just, again, another black and white picture, um, and keyframe, the brightness curve, the brightness curve is what is adjusting the transition over time from, from completely opaque to starting, starting to show through the transition and until it's completely um, transparent, showing the, the next clip. So this curve, as I said before, it kind of gets automatically set by OpenShot when you drop a transition or a mask on. But you can actually adjust the brightness curve however you want. You can reverse it. Um, and there's actually a, you can actually go to a transition and just say reverse um, if you want to do it the, the quick way. And that starts the second clip as completely opaque and then fading away back to the original. So you can reverse the brightness clip, I mean the brightness keyframe. Um, so the, the other part of this is contrast. I didn't talk much about contrast, but um, anytime you have a mask or a transition, the contrast is basically the fuzziness, um, you know, how sharp, as it, as it kind of animates across your grayscale image, how sharp should that line be? So you can kind of um, keyframe contrast as well and play with that and see, see kind of the, you know, how, how dramatic of a transition do you want or how kind of soft and fuzzy do you want your, your mask or transition? Um, so I'm going to show the, the original example of the mask. I, I've, I'm going to create a few variations of that and kind of show um, what it looks like with various backgrounds behind it. Uh, but I hope this was useful, um, creating a custom mask, um, animating transitions using the brightness and contrast um, curves so that you can kind of really control how the trans uh, transitions work. Um, and hopefully this was a useful video on something that might not be terribly obvious. <laughs> so um, thank you, and I will see you in the next video.